Hello. Today I'll be discussing a 1986 paper written by Shirley Saraceto, a professor of sociology at California State University, Long Beach, and Dr. Howard Waitskin, University of California Professor of Medicine and Social Sciences. The title of this paper is Economic Development, Political Economic System, and the Physical Quality of Life. Now, the conclusion of this paper is, as expected, that socialism provides a better quality of life than capitalism at equal levels of economic development. The World Bank was the principal source used for their data, covering 123 countries and 97% of the world's population. The findings showed that in 28 out of 30 comparisons between countries at similar levels of economic development, meaning 93% of the time, socialist countries provided a higher quality of life than capitalism. 93% of the time. I'll repeat, 93% of the time, socialism gave people a higher standard of living than capitalism, given equal levels of economic development. Now, I'm going to try to be very generous here, considering this is an economic paper written by two people who are not economists. It was also written before the credibility revolution in empirical economics. It's also quite ironic that countries such as the Soviet Union built the little success they did have off of countries like the US. In the early Soviet days, a majority of the tractors they had were US manufactured or copied from US tractors. These tractors are one of the things that brought them through their industrial revolution. Also, it wasn't for the lend leasing of many trucks that the Soviet Union was very bad at producing themselves during World War II. The Soviet Union would have suffered even greater losses and made it to Germany much, much later. Now, going back to the study itself, the distinction between socialist and capitalist countries is pretty arbitrary. I much prefer to use objective measurements such as economic freedom, private property rights, and general amount of government control over the economy. Now in this study, the authors classify countries such as Burma as capitalist, even though from 1962 to 1988, Burma was going through the Burmese way to socialism, nationalizing industry and converting into a Soviet-style command economy. The abject failure of these policies increased inequality and poverty, and the authors here are essentially blaming that on capitalism. Another capitalist country that they include is Sri Lanka. From 1948 to 1977, Sri Lanka was socialist. Massive amounts of nationalization and welfare. After 1977, they switched around and went for a more free market approach. The point here is for almost three decades, they were utilizing socialist policies. And just a few short years before this study, they switched around. This is a huge amount of missing context. And this is very consistent among these socialist and capitalist countries in this study. Countries that are explicitly socialist, labeled as capitalists, countries that switched shortly before the study was made, and capitalist countries under Marxist-Leninist dictatorships. Now, with those points being made, let's look at some other papers, such as this one by Robert A. Lawson, someone who actually has a PhD in economics. In this paper, him and Joshua Hall reviewed over 400 studies on economic freedom. Over two-thirds of them showed positive effects of economic freedom, while less than 4% showed negative. These positive effects include quality of life, economic growth, income, health, and more. In other words, when Comrade Hakim provides one study in support of his view, I counter with about 200 in support of mine. I could bring up many, many more too, such as this literature review from Graphland, which shows once again, most studies show that economic freedom has positive effects on people's lives. Capitalism has positive effects on people's lives.